Got a holiday planned? Who's been meaning to plan a holiday? Who's not having a holiday? Oh, for some of you, life's just one long holiday. <laughs> yeah, 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 fantastic. It's all good fun, isn't it? It's all fantastic. What I'd like you to do this morning is would you just mind checking your pulse for a moment? You can either do it up here or you can do it. You can just check your pulse. Just see if that. Come on, check your pulse. You know where to find it? The person next to you doesn't know where to find their pulse. Show them where to find it. It's a reasonable... It's a reasonable indicator that you are actually alive. It's also an indicator of a little bit of what's going on with you. I know I used to be a competitive swimmer, and sort of halfway through my career, uh, they developed this thing where, you know, you do your repetitions, and I used to say, tell the coach, man, I'm really tired, but no more of that. He would check the pulse, okay, you're ready to go again. So uh, there was no sort of, uh, no cheating, you're off, you're away again. And I was just thinking about it. It's really, uh, really, I just want to talk about the heartbeat of heaven this morning. I want to really encourage you this morning in the incredible thing that Jesus has done for each one of us. But I, you know, when, when you're having uh, a baby, I was checking with Dr. Sam, apparently it's about five, after about five weeks into the pregnancy, there's a, uh, a measurable heartbeat in the womb. And... Uh, that is just so, so cool. How exciting is that when you start to hear uh, life on the inside? And, of course, these days, I mean, when, when we had our kids, uh, there was no such things as scans or those things where they sort of do this thing on your stomach and see what's going on in there. We just had to wait and see. Uh, but I was thinking about Joseph and Mary. They didn't need a scan. <laughs> they, they knew exactly what was coming up. Uh, incredibly exciting for them, uh, incredibly scary, but they, they knew who was inside. And I just imagine the tremendous excitement they must have felt knowing who was on the inside. So let's pray as we, um, as we share today. Father, I thank you for the incredible season that we are enjoying together today. Thank you for the amazing opportunity that we have to bring the good news to the nation. And we just agree together today that uh, many, many lives will be touched for you. Lord, that the reality of Jesus, the beauty, the wonder of Jesus, Lord, will be sown into their lives and their hearts. We just cry out to you today for that. Lord, as we share together in your word today, we pray every one of us will be encouraged and that our heart will beat in tune with yours because that's going to be how our life will be lived to the absolute max. So we thank you. I thank you for every person here. Lord, I declare over each one, Lord, that you are going to fulfill those things you've begun in their lives. I loose over them, Lord God, your favor, your blessing. I declare those things that you declared, Lord God, that you're going to bring peace and joy uh, to all of us. Let peace, Lord, fill every heart. Let that shalom of God just uh, invade every life. And let the joy of the Lord just overflow through our lives. The people around us may know that we belong to Jesus. And for his sake we pray. Amen. Okay, just uh, though, just when I can think, you know, when, uh, when people first get pregnant, they're pretty careful about who they tell, you know. So uh, I just imagine Mary thinking, well, oh, you know, who can, I, who, can, who can I tell? This is not your regular pregnancy. Uh, you know, we, we, we weren't married and stuff like that and people will think the worst who can I tell and so uh, I think now who who is there I can tell and she remembers Zachariah and Elizabeth they had a miracle baby and, uh, and Elizabeth was old and she was barren but she had she'll understand so off she rushes to see uh, Zechariah and uh, and Elizabeth and we, we're going to pick up the story in Luke chapter 1 and reading from verse 39 this is from the uh, the message version. Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judah in the hill country straight to Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly, you're so blessed among women and the babe in your womb also blessed. 
And why am I so blessed that the mother of my Lord visits me? The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the babe in my womb skipped like a lamb for sheer joy. Blessed woman who believed what God had said, believed every word would come true. What an incredible encounter. He is a, a womb-to-womb encounter. He is John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb, leaping for joy, just the sensing the heartbeat of heaven, sensing the very thing for which he had been miraculously uh, you know, conceived by the goodness of God, by the miracle working power of God. He is the very purpose of his life. Right in the womb, there's this heartbeat to heartbeat and this incredible identity that happens between them. It's just an, ama- an amazing, incredible moment. And I, I believe that, you know, here we have uh, a birthing. When we, are, when we are born again, something wakens up on the inside of us. There's a leap that happens inside of us. There's a heartbeat that begins to respond to the heartbeat of heaven. And, you know, the heartbeat of heaven is for incredible blessing to flow into our lives, for his favor, for his peace, for his joy to fill our lives, to give us a life that's overflowing with abundance. Amen. So this was like the first time that Jesus and John actually met. Very interesting that later on, um, you know, we, we're going to read the scripture now where John said, the only way I'm going to know who Jesus is, is when I see the spirit on him, the same thing happening again. And very interesting, I can almost saying, hear him saying to Jesus, we mustn't, uh, we mustn't keep meeting like this. We always seem to be in water when we meet. Yeah? <laughs> so the second meeting, here they are in the water again, in John chapter 1 and verse 32. Then John said, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven upon him. I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, when you see the Holy Spirit descending and resting upon someone, he's the one you are looking for. He's the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the Son of God. You know, some things haven't changed. We, we have all sorts of um, ways we identify ourselves as followers of Jesus. You know, we, we may... Uh, associate with with a group, we may dress in a particular way, we may develop a particular lifestyle. But bottom line, the way that Jesus was identified, the way that they met each other is the way that he continues to identify those who are his. It's by the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the one thing I want to encourage you in is that the distinctive feature of followers of Jesus is the presence of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. All the other things should be just outcomes from the incredible sense that, you know, Jesus came. What did they call him? They called him Emmanuel, God with us. What a, what a miracle that God himself came from heaven to come in human form. God came to demonstrate his incredible love for us. Think of the value that he placed on the human race. It's not... It's not like, hey, you're of no value, so I've come to make you a valuable person. He already values you. God so loved the world. He so loved the world already. He loved you already. Even while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He loves you, and he loves you so much that he gave heaven's best. And the the same thing, he modeled for us how he wants life to be lived. As Jesus walked, he wants us to walk. He was so anointed, who is identified by the Spirit of God upon him. That's how he wants to identify us, by the Spirit of the living God upon us. Please, can I encourage you? You've all worked so hard this year. You've all worked so hard at so many things. It's time to take a rest. It's time to sit back and relax and thank Jesus that he's already done it all. Time to sit back and relax and to remember once again that we don't earn our way into the favor of God. We are already his favorites. Even before we did one single thing for him, he marked us out as his favorites. You don't have to do one more thing. He has already put his spirit in you and on you. He has marked you as his own.